We are not anti-union, but we are not neutral either. While we understand unions work in some industries, they would conflict with our culture, customer obsession, and direct working relationship. Throughout Amazon's 25-year history, there have been multiple rumblings of workers trying to unionize. The people united will never be defeated. But none of those efforts have been successful. Amazon remains non-union, in part by training its managers how to handle union efforts, like in this video, which was sent to Whole Foods managers in 2018. We do not believe unions are in the best interest of our customers, our shareholders, or most importantly, our associates. Efforts by big businesses to fend off organized labor are increasingly common in America, while union membership has dropped considerably since its heyday 50 years ago. But with record-breaking sales numbers and newly doubled shipping speeds, momentum to organize has picked up among some of Amazon's more than 650,000 worldwide employees. We work, we sweat, Amazon workers need a rest. Three big unions that are talking to Amazon workers are the Teamsters, the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, and the Retail, Wholesale, and Department Store Union, among others. Last year, the CEO of Axel Springer asked Jeff Bezos his stance on unions. We we don't believe that we need a union to be an intermediary between us and our employees. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, it's always the employee's choice. And, th and that's how it should be. No organizing efforts have gotten very far. We wanted to find out, what are unions all about? And how could they impact Amazon and its workers? First off, what exactly are unions? A union is a membership organization that exists because a group of employees share a common interest. Most of today's major unions formed in the late 19th and early 20th century so that they could bargain collectively against the huge organizations that they worked for. Each union collects a different amount of dues from its members, usually around 1 to 1 1.5% of each paycheck. And there's often an initiation fee when you first join a union shop. They don't have investors. They don't raise money for profit, unlike corporations. The reason why unions typically charge dues is the same reason why every other membership organization, whether it's the National Rifle Association or the American Civil Liberties Union, charge dues, is because they undertake to provide services to their members. Certainly they will pay for kind of administrative costs, the salaries of the union organizer or the union reps, um, but they also go to the, the union national as well. So some certainly larger, more institutional unions have their own national political lobbying interests. And even if union members don't agree with the message that their unions are sending nationally or politically, those dues are still going to be used for those types of lobbying efforts. And if you are able to unionize an entire workforce, that is millions of dollars that goes into the union coffers. In 1935, the National Labor Relations Act was passed, protecting the rights of employees to act together as a group in the workplace. It prohibits employers from firing or retaliating against an employee for organizing. The National Labor Relations Board is the federal agency tasked with enforcing these rights, and all unionizing efforts must go through an official filing process with the NLRB. It's the unions that, you know, brought us the weekend. It's the unions that helped get rid of child labor. Unions had their heyday in the U.S. almost 50 years ago, with 381 major strikes that resulted in work stoppages in 1970. Last year, there were only 20. Unions have been under a concerted attack from businesses and even from within government. So it's no surprise that today in the private sector, only about 6.5% of workers are unionized. Uh, that's down from it used to be well over a third uh, in, in the 1970s. Total compensation for union workers, including things like benefits and retirement, costs employers on average $14 more per hour worked versus paying a non-union worker. So companies do a lot of work and pay a lot of money to make sure that their ability to form unions is not done very efficiently or easily. A Pew Research Center poll last year showed 55% of Americans hold a favorable view of unions. The Bureau of Labor Statistics found that last year, unionized workers made on average $191, or more than 22% more than non-union workers each week. But unionizing comes with downsides, too. It makes communication very difficult sometimes between the employees and the employer because after a union is brought in under the National Labor Relations Act, uh, the employer is no longer allowed to directly deal with the employees. It's also very difficult to innovate. They may have different ideas for policies, different ways of doing things that they just want to experiment with. And with a union in place, it makes it really difficult to do that because everything has to be negotiated 
with the union at that point. So companies routinely complain that having a union means that the supervisor can't talk to the workers directly, and that is simply false. Unionizing starts with workers, usually from a single work site, like one Amazon fulfillment center, talking amongst themselves outside of work hours, often holding informal meetings and discussing shared concerns. If momentum builds, workers then select a union they feel best represents their interests. In Amazon's case, workers have talked to the Teamsters, UFCW, and RWDSU. We have, in fact, talked to hundreds and hundreds of workers around the country in different locations. They called the union and said, we've got problems, can you help us? If there's enough support, workers then sign union cards. The employer then has the choice to voluntarily recognize the union. If that doesn't happen, and it often doesn't, a date is set for an official election where a simple majority wins. At that point, many employers choose to run an anti-union campaign. If this vote fails, that union is banned from organizing workers at the site for a year. Amazon workers we talked to expressed opinions on both sides of the union debate. But whether Amazon workers are currently signing authorization cards is a closely guarded secret. The only thing that you can do on an organizing campaign is operate under surprise. If an employer knows that you're signing cards and doing things like that, they will come after them, you know, tooth and toenail. Amazon workers need a rest. The most recent example of workers and unions taking action happened on Prime Day in July, when a handful of Amazon workers at one fulfillment center outside Minneapolis went on strike. We are trying to be one, and we are, you know, it's not like we don't want to work here, but we just want change. It was the first strike by U.S. workers during the company's annual sales event that started five years ago. About 80 people gathered in support of the workers who chose to walk out, past a line of around 20 security guards and police. In Shakopee, workers held other rallies in March and December, calling for better working conditions. Amazon says the workforce at the 855,000 square foot fulfillment center there is 30% Somali. We've done a lot to help, like, do you need a prayer mat? Do you need a prayer space? Like, let's get one set up. But other workers complain about working conditions, things like allotted time off task and the expected pace of work. They should make this a better workplace by reducing rates, improve, improving worker safety, and bringing our temp brothers and sisters on as full-time employees. Management demands the best from its workers. Now we want their best. Politicians like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren tweeted in support of the strike. And three software engineers flew in from Amazon headquarters to join the protest. Without its employees, Amazon does not exist. We are all partners in its success. We deserve a say in how the results of our success, Amazon's profits and its innovations are being used. The protest was organized by the Awud Center, an East African worker advocate group that's backed in part by the Teamsters and the Service Employees International Union, along with local labor groups like the Minneapolis Regional Labor Federation. The people who participated in today's event are mainly outside organizers who are uninformed about what it's really like to work inside an Amazon Fulfillment Center. With only 15 employees who participated from this site, that tells me that our employees truly do believe that they are working in a safe and innovative workplace. If only a couple of handfuls of workers at Amazon walked out in solidarity, and the vast majority didn't, doesn't say a whole lot. They're always thinking in the back of their head, there's probably going to be retaliation if I go out there. If I go out there, I'm going to be named as one of the union organizers. Amazon respects the rights of our employees, and we have a zero tolerance policy on retaliation for employees raising their concerns. Although the Prime Day protests got a lot of media attention, Amazon said it did not impact operations and that this year's Prime Day was the largest shopping event in Amazon history. Earlier this month, dozens of workers staged a walkout at an Amazon delivery center in Egan, Minnesota, over a lack of parking that led to workers' cars being towed. We're going to be standing out here until we get a solution. Shortly after, Amazon agreed to provide additional parking and repay towing fees. Amazon workers are under attack. What do we do? Stand up right back. Thank you. Last year, workers held a series of protests in New York with the backing of RWDSU, calling for unionization after Amazon announced plans to bring its second headquarters to Queens. Within three months, Amazon withdrew its HQ2 offer from the city. If Amazon had lived up to the deal that they had agreed to with us and the governor of New York, it would have shown a model that could be used elsewhere. I think that's what Amazon was afraid of. 
In a press release at the time, Amazon cited different reasons, saying a number of state and local politicians have made it clear that they oppose our presence and will not work with us to build the type of relationships that are required to go forward with the project. After Amazon bought Whole Foods in 2017, workers there also showed signs of organizing. Last September, the Wall Street Journal reported that a group of Whole Foods workers sent an email to workers at most of the 490 stores, urging them to back a unionization drive. The UFCW sent CNBC 15 public statements from Whole Foods workers over the last two years, laying out concerns about time off, training, workload, and staff shortages. In a statement, Amazon says, No team member has decided to join a union anywhere at Whole Foods Market. Selective accounts from a small handful of individuals doesn't accurately represent the collective views of our amazing 95,000-plus team members. The last official unionizing attempt was in 2013, when Amazon maintenance and repair technicians in Delaware officially filed with the NLRB. The union was voted down 21 to 6. Unions have been trying to organize Amazon since the early 2000s, uh, and it really just seems like there aren't very many workers who want to join a union. Uh, at Amazon because if they did, they would have organized them already. Well, I don't think it's that simple because as soon as there's any, uh, any word that authorization cards are being passed around, the companies generally uh, send out their HR people uh, to try to quash whatever effort uh, that labor organization may be doing in order to sign workers up. Workers at other big retailers have also failed to unionize in recent years. Last year, workers at a Target store in New York voted 118 to 39 against forming a union under UFCW. Walmart has successfully held off UFCW unionizing efforts for years. In Europe, where unions have a stronger foothold, Amazon workers also remain non-union. But workers there have been more active, staging protests during sales events for years. In Germany, more than 2,000 people participated in Prime Day protests in at least seven locations last month. Well, I think that it's very likely that they're going to unionize in Europe. I think it is difficult to unionize in the United States, especially with a company the size of Amazon, for the following reason. Our labor laws aren't nearly as progressive. Our social contract uh, with workers is not as strong here in the United States. Among developed democracies, the U.S. has one of the lowest percentages of unionized workers. Only 10.5 percent of wage and salary workers are members of unions. Compare that to Finland and Denmark, where more than 60 percent of workers are unionized. Still, some of Amazon's contract workers in the U.S. are already unionized, like this Amazon Air pilot who was at the protest in Shakopee. Being part of a union that's working with one of the most powerful corporations in the world, uh, it can be daunting. It's going to be a lot of work at the beginning, but I think the dividends will pay off in the long run. Amazon's response to workers who want to unionize, it's unnecessary. We're already offering what unions are asking, which is industry-leading pay, great benefits, and a safe and innovative workplace. Among Amazon workers we talked to, some told us they're happy with their current situation. I, I like the direct communication with my team, and like I always want that to be there. So like, hey, if we have to do a change, we can do it right away. And that's that's our big like Amazon. I think the sh like why we're so successful is we can we can pivot if we need to, and like make sure that all, we're always keeping a focus on our customers, but internally and externally as well. And I don't think that really works with our union um, kind of environment, but like that's just my personal opinion. Well, I have excellent health care, excellent dental, excellent vision. I have a retirement plan now. You know, I didn't have that before. I love my job. I love the benefits. I love the people I work with. While we've been building a great customer experience, we've been equally focused on building a great employee experience, whether that's you know, the egalitarian benefits where I have the same benefits as everybody else in this building does, or our career choice program, you know, our $15 an hour minimum that we rolled out in the U.S. Amazon is also known for helping associates advance. Its career choice program pays up to 95% of tuition for associates studying high demand fields. And last month, Amazon pledged to spend $700 million to retrain a third of its U.S. workforce by 2025 to move to more advanced jobs. Money is one big reason experts told us that Amazon prefers its workers not to join a union. If the union contract says that they have to slow down how fast they're sorting through packages and things like that, then they're either going to have to bring on a huge number of more employees, which is certainly costly, or they're going to have to only deliver things in a week's time, and then you're going to lose your competitive advantage. Workers who vocally support unions are protected by the NLRB. 
And so the company will find a reason to fire the union organizers. They know it's illegal. When it's ultimately adjudicated, the company will be ordered to reinstate the fired employee with back pay, but the company will say, eh, cost of doing business, and the long-term payoff is no union. We are not robots. One worker who protested in New York was fired a month later for what Amazon said was an unrelated safety violation. He's now filed a complaint with the NLRB. In any sort of campaign, there are going to be those types of charges, so it doesn't necessarily mean that they're being targeted because of their union activism. It could just very well be employees who have performance problems, don't follow the rules, and are now choosing to claim that they're being retaliated against. The NLRB also has open cases with Amazon in Ohio, Colorado, Kentucky, Maryland, Washington, Illinois, and in Shakopee, Minnesota, the site of last month's Prime Day protest. Amazon is not alone. In 2014, the NLRB filed a formal complaint charging Walmart illegally fired, disciplined, or threatened more than 60 employees in 14 states. With 1.5 million U.S. employees, Walmart is the country's largest private employer. Unionizing efforts succeeded only once at Walmart, when meat department workers at one store in Texas joined the UFCW in 2000. But two weeks later, Walmart announced it was switching to prepackaged meat and eliminated butchers at that store and 179 others. And in 2015, Walmart closed five stores that the UFCW says was in retaliation for labor activism. If you see warning signs of potential organizing, notify your building HRM and GM site leader immediately. At Amazon, where efforts haven't come as far, this 2018 leaked Whole Foods video illustrates some ways companies hope to prevent unionizing efforts. Make it a point to regularly talk to associates in the break room. This will help protect you from accusations that you were only in the break room to spy on pro-union associates. The video that Amazon put out that was discouraging workers from unionizing is classic union busting material we see over and over again at companies all across this country. And what it's designed to do is basically have a chilling effect. It's not hard to imagine how far a union organizer might go to get you to sign their card. We hope that you never have to deal with a union organizing drive in your facility. That type of education for managers is, is fairly common. I mean, they don't know what they're able to say and what they're not able to say under the law. It can be very tricky. So certain types of training, I think, is actually a really good idea. Amazon is also recruiting a handful of employee relations managers who are required to have significant experience in handling union organizing activities, and they'll be responding to union activity among other duties. On Twitter, a group of Amazon employees known as Fulfillment Center Ambassadors actively tweet about how much they love working at Amazon, often in response to threads about poor treatment of Amazon workers. Some FC ambassadors have tweeted messages like, unions are thieves, and union protection makes it hard for employers to discipline, terminate, or promote. How likely it is that Amazon workers will unionize depends largely on who you ask. That's going to be very tough. They have never-ending resources and money to make sure that the workers never get to come to the bargaining table with a union. So I think it's going to be a, a long uphill battle. So it might be difficult to, to organize employees around issues such as wages. But then there are other issues such as productivity and job safety, uh, automation, that uh, warehouse employees across the country at Amazon might be interested in. And, and if the unions are able to kind of galvanize on that, I think that could make it really difficult for Amazon to keep their workplace union free. And if Amazon workers do unionize, it would impact a wide range of industries. Amazon is a retailer, but it's also a transportation company, it's a media company, it's, you know, in the pharmaceutical business. I mean, it, it would reverberate all across the economy and provide hope for working people everywhere. I think this would have a huge impact. The tech industry has not been strongly unionized at all. And if a company like Amazon were unionized, my, my guess is that other tech-based uh, employers would also face similar types of unionization movements and so this could very well be the type of foothold that unions are looking for uh, when they're trying to unionize the entire tech industry.